Hi, my name is George Yates, developer advocate here at Astronomer. And today I'm here to talk to you about why Airflow is the best tool to manage the modern data stack. Now, over the past couple decades, the modern data stack has only grown and grown, and it shows no signs of slowing down. Um, you have tooling for every possible use case, tons of different databases, data lakes, APIs, analytics tools, and just use case specific applications that the modern business has to manage. And with so many moving parts, it's very easy to get lost in the flow. So what is the best thing to actually tie it all together? The answer is Apache Airflow. And today I'm going to show you why Airflow is the best tool possible to manage all of your data pipeline use cases and even more. So without further ado, let's get into it. So what is Airflow? The best orchestration tool in the world. And I'm not just going to say that, I'm going to prove it to you. Apache Airflow is a way to programmatically author, schedule, and monitor all of your data pipelines. It's created at Airbnb in 2014, then was brought into a, the Apache Software Foundation as an open source project and continued to grow as additional contributors uh, were brought onto the project to actually help with building Airflow, taking the onus just off Maxime. Um, and there's a couple reasons why it has now become the industry's leading workflow orchestration solution. Number one, it's a proven core functionality for data pipeline. Um, that means it just works. It is able to handle almost any workload you throw at it. It has DAGs and tasks as data pipelines and different functions within those data pipelines. Uh, and it's a relatively easy to understand framework. Uh, and because it's easy to understand, because it's got a proven core, it's very extensible. You have providers like Snowflake, like Amazon bringing their own project or products like you know Snowflake databases or S3 buckets and building integrations within Airflow so that you can easily connect to those services. And so you can add on whatever additional package you need to build Airflow into the tool that you need. Uh, and then correspondingly, it's scalable. You can add additional compute. You can build on top of Airflow. You can add additional environments to scale as your business grows, as you need to grow your pipelines. And then finally, it's got a large vibrant community, You've got thousands of contributors, you have millions of downloads each month, millions of users, um, and it's only continuing to grow and accelerate. So diving deeper into some of the concepts and terminology around Airflow, um, first you have the components. So Airflow runs on a stack of several different components. You have your web server, your scheduler, your database, your triggerer, and then you have your compute node, your workers, who which will actually run the job. They provide the compute power to run your Airflow tasks. And so the way you define your Airflow data pipelines is through DAGs, which stands for Directed Acyclic Graphs, which means the DAG can only go in one way. It can't loop back on itself, so no recursive logic. Um, and those DAGs are made up of several different tasks. And each task within Airflow will perform an operation uh, before triggering a downstream task, or if it's in, then en ending the DAG. And these tasks can be anything from pulling data from an API to storing data in a database to transforming data using uh, pandas and Python. Um, you can really define tasks for almost any operation. And then to make defining those tasks easier, so you don't have to write the full code to interact with any external services, you have things called operators. And what these operators allow you to do is actually interact with something like, let's say, a Postgres database just by entering your Postgres credentials and a SQL statement you want to run, rather than having to manually connect to that Postgres database and figure out how to uh, pass a SQL uh, query in there. So Postgres it's already figured it out, and then you get to leverage their work. And it's the same for almost any provider out there for your Snowflakes, your Amazons, your Googles, your Azures. They all have their own provider or operators, providers to actually interact with their own services so you don't have to build them yourself. So now bringing into the Airflow UI so we can look at this in practice, what you'll have when you log into your UI is a list of all your different DAGs, all their schedules, all the information around them if you tag them, and you can see the most recent successes or failures of your DAGs and tasks. And so if we click into one of these example DAGs, um, here I have a DAG that is performing an operation uh, where it's inserting some data into a uh, Snowflake database uh, and then running some data quality checks on it. So you can see I can monitor my tasks either just um, via this grid view on the right, or I can look at the graph view to see the relationships between tasks and how they all link together. Um, and you can see it will also tell me the status of each of those tasks. And the way this is all defined is all via Python code. So you can see, I can go look at my Python code 
can write this in the editor of your choice um, that actually defines the uh, DAG that you just saw. Um, so if you're familiar with Python, it's a really easy jump to start writing Airflow DAGs. So now that we've talked a little bit about what Airflow is and some of the things it can do, who uses Airflow? Why is it used so much across the uh, modern data ecosystem? Well, it's because pipelines power innovation in almost every aspect. Um, there's a pipeline behind almost every piece of the modern business. Um, if you have an analytics dashboard, there's a DAG and a pipeline that's probably powering that. Data applications, if you're serving data to customers or even internally, needs pipelines to provide that data. ETL processes, ML models, even training your own L, uh, large language models, all require a pipeline to manage the processes for those different use cases. Um, and that's why Airflow is so extensible because it can be fit to do any of these five things. And these aren't even just the only use cases. There's millions more out there um, that Airflow can also be used for. And so here you can see an example of a real world implementation of Airflow. Um, so here in this implementation, what we're doing is we're collecting data from Oracle, Teradata, extracting it. Um, then we're loading that into an AWS S3 bucket before performing some transformations on it using Databricks and then loading it into Snowflake notifying ourselves that that uh, Snowflake load went well. Maybe we're also in parallel using that same data that we're transforming to train a model within Talend so that we can you know, provide some ML insights to our customers. Um, and then at the end of this, once we've gotten our clean data within Snowflake, we're going to use that to then maybe update a BI dashboard and run a data science experiment via TensorFlow. Uh, and then we're also going to terminate that Databricks cluster because Databricks clusters are expensive. Um, and so you can see, Airflow is able to connect to all of these services and also make them work together beautifully without running into you know, any kind of relationships breaking, giving you one single layer to monitor all these services. So instead of me needing to go into all of these individually to check on the status of my data pipeline, I can just go into Airflow, view the logs, view all the information about what's happened within each of these tasks. And so it really just simplifies the process of not only building data pipelines, since this is all a single Python file, but also managing them once they're in production. So now that we've talked a bit about you know, what Airflow is, how do you use it, who uses it, I want to also make a case for why Airflow is the best orchestrator out there. Um, you know, there are other orchestration tools, other scheduling tools, but Airflow really is the best, and now I'll explain why. Airflow is that really rock-solid core that you can extend and build on top of to make it fit perfectly for your particular use case. You know, you have thousands of integrations. You have ways to convert YAML files into DAGs or write DAGs without needing to actually know how to write air or write Airflow code. Um, you can translate existing code into Airflow code easily. Uh, you have integrations with things like you know, ML flow, uh, great expectations, SDKs to eliminate some of the boilerplate code. Um, you have scheduling APIs that are super rich in their functionality so that you can actually perform your data pipeline management without ever needing to open your Airflow UI. Uh, and then for me, the most important is you have a huge community of users. If something goes wrong, if there's something you know, you're know you stuck on, you jump in the Airflow Slack and you can talk to some real Airflow users who are passionate about it and are very, very helpful and want to see Airflow grow and expand. Um, and that is really the point I wanted to make for you today. You should use Airflow because it is the best workflow orchestration tool out there that can be adapted and extended into any workflow while still being scalable and enterprise grade for the modern business. So I hope this has convinced you to give Airflow a try and I'll see you at Astro when you're ready.